we're going to buy the Twisby VAC 700R. And on your email list, just wondering if it will fit the VAC 20 inkwell. I see they changed the dip units. So did they change the section as well, the part that screws into the inkwell? Please keep up the great work in the whole Brian and the whole Goulet team. Well, thank you, Terry. Appreciate that. Um, the reason I took this question, I've been getting questions about the VAC 700 for a while, but I took this one uh, because it covers uh, two parts. It covers, covers the nib uh, kind of grip section thing, and then it also covers the VAC 20 inkwell, which is good. So I'm going to cover both of these in one shot, and then we can slice this out and reference it later. But um, I have with me the VAC 700, the original, and the VAC 700R which is just redesign, VAC 700, that's what the R stands for. Um, so, cap and everything is exactly the same. It does have uh, the word, or sorry, the letter R on the back. I'm gonna zoom in again, um, just so you kind of see what's going on. It's VAC 700 R, see that beauty? And then the original VAC 700 just says VAC 700. Sorry, it's like reversed in the camera and all that. So VAC 700, overall cap design, exactly the same on both. Clip is the same, it's got that kind of matte finish on it and everything, so that's all cool. Um, so there's a couple of differences, and really there's only one real difference on this pen, and that has to do with the O-ring seal. And there is a redesign that happens on the grip section of the pen related to the seal, so that's the only difference. So um, to get into it here, I'm gonna cover just the difference in the grips first. That way you can kind of see what's going on, and then I'll talk about the inkwell. So I'm going to have to try to keep all this stuff straight. The first thing that's going to be the most obvious difference between these pens is if you look inside, you can see there's a difference in the way these O-rings are designed. And if I actually pull them down, it'll probably be a little easier for you to see. But um, on the VAC 700 original, there's two O-rings. There's the big one that goes against the walls of the pen, and that's what is used to create the vacuum to, to fill the pen with ink. And then it has this second O-ring, this kind of conical shaped one that actually mates up to the back of the nib, uh, sorry, the feed, the nib unit. Uh, and that is what seals the pen closed when you have it closed all the way so that it doesn't burp and things like that in travel. So Twisby and, you know, was getting some complaints and stuff like that of, you know, the pen not flowing properly, especially writing dry. And I think it was because this O-ring here on the original design was having issues unsealing from the back of the nib unit, even though people were unscrewing the back, because that's what you have to do with this pen, you know, when you go to write with it, you got to unscrew the back and kind of pull the nib unit away a little bit. And people were having issues with that. So they redesigned it so that it would basically be easier for that action to happen. So now there, it still seals, even though it doesn't have that second O-ring in there, they redesigned the nib unit and they redesigned this o the way this O-ring fits so that when it's closed all the way, it still seals, but it seals, you know, less intensely, I guess, than the old one did, so that when you unscrew it all the way, it's it's very intentional, has a very obvious difference in the, the distance there. So I'm gonna reassemble the pens and kind of show you what I'm talking about. So, you know, the Twisby VAC 700, which make sure I got the right one, okay. You know, when it's closed up and sealed up all the way. So, I don't know how easily you can see this. Let me see if I can zoom in even more. Get in as close as I can. There we go. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yes, there we go. Okay, so you can see there, as I unscrew the back of the pen, you can see there the O-ring is kind of releasing up here from the nib unit, and then you kind of pull it away. But I think what was happening is it was not providing enough flow, or that O-ring was maybe causing the flow to you know, not be as fluid as it should. So on the new one, which is what I have in my hand here, as I am unscrewing it, you can see just the action of unscrewing it. There's a very clear and intentional break there. Can you see that? You can actually, let me see in the back. You can see my, my finger in the back there. Sorry, I'm getting a little glare on the camera. But there's a very clear uh, path for that ink to go. So that's not even like pulling back far on the, I mean, you can pull it back, you know, you can pull it back even further if you want to, to really get a good, good flow going there, but it's not really necessary. Just there's a plenty flow there. So that's why they did it that way. Um, so can you switch and swap the nibs in between each other? Well, yes, technically you can. Like the only redesign that happened is, that's a nuanced question. The answer is no, but it's also yes. So if you look at the grip here on the back of the nib unit, um, the O-rings and stuff are situated in a very similar fashion. So they're gonna seal up 
um, they actually added an O-ring here on the grip. This is the, so sorry, this is the VAC 700. Oh boy. This is the VAC 700 right here, and this is the VAC 700R. So you can see there's a difference here in the way they've designed the backs of these grips. So there's two O-rings on the new VAC 700R. So not only will it help to seal it up there, but it'll help to make sure that really that no ink is going to leak out of the pen and onto the grip. So they added an O-ring there that was kind of nice. And you notice it's a little taller. Um, so what the reason they did it that way is so that the mechanism, the back of the piston, will fit kind of into that cavity and just seal it up nicer. So let me actually try to unscrew and show you how this action actually works. Forgive me, I'm zoomed in. You can't really see what's going on. Be patient. Okay, unscrewing, unscrewing. Okay. Oops, lost my O-ring. How about that? Okay. Voila. So I have my, my O-ring here. So this is the VAC 700R. So the way this thing fits on here, when it's sealed, is it kind of goes in there like that. So it really kind of seats down inside of there, seals it up nicely, and then when it's unscrewed, it's out there like that. If I were to use the grip of the original VAC 700 on here, it does not go inside of there. So it does not really seal it up well at all. Uh, technically, it will fit inside of there, and I'll show you that in a second, but it's not really meant to be compatible, so it's not going to seal up the pen closed like it would otherwise, or like it's supposed to. Is that making sense? I hope you guys are following me on here. I know it's a little confusing. Um, likewise, showing you the back of the VAC 700 here. So this has got the same O-ring, but then it's got the second O-ring up top here, which you can remove and have it you know, nice and open and flowing if you want. Then you're not getting any advantages of the actually sealing up the ink chamber. Um, so this is how this one seals up to, this is the VAC 700 nib unit. So it seals up there. So this cone shape fits right into this little cone area here and seals it up nicely. Well, if you use it on the new VAC 700R, it's going to go in there, but it's not really going to seal in there properly because what's going to happen is it's this part is going to hit inside here. It's not going to allow it to seat down in there nicely like it does on the VAC 700R piston rod. So it's just not going to seal up quite as nice. Now technically, if you wanted to, let me reassemble all my parts here because I'm uh, getting a little out of control now. Okay, so I got my VAC 700. How quickly can Brian reassemble Twisby's while everybody's waiting for him? Okay. Get this back in place here. Okay. Voila. Beautiful. Okay. So, um, if I'm using my VAC 700, so this is my original VAC 700, and I have a VAC 700R nib unit. I can technically put the nib unit on there, and I can technically close it up. It's just not going to seal really well in here. So you, you technically could swap it if you wanted to, but just don't expect it to function properly as it should. There you go. So it'll fit both, but it's really meant to just be on the other ones. Now, it's not all hope is lost here. I mean, if you want to, um, if you want to be able to um, swap them, oh, actually, you know what, okay. So here's something, if you are swapping the, um, sorry, I'm discovering a little bit as I go here. If you're swapping the, this is the VAX 700R nib unit, and the only reason I can tell the difference between the two uh, easily is because this one's a broad and that one's a medium. But anyway, um, so this is, uh, I actually swapped the, swapped, swapped the wrong bodies. This is what happens when you don't, when you shoot everything in one take, folks. So um, this is actually the body for the VAC 700. I got my parts mixed up. It's easy to do. You re it's really difficult to tell the difference between the bodies of the two, but there is a little bit of a difference, and I just discovered what that is. So if I am using the VAC 700R body, it's going to fit the grip a little bit differently. So I can fit the VAC 700 nib unit flush onto the VAC 700R body. But if I'm fitting the VAC 700R nib unit 
onto the VAC700 body, there's a little bit of a gap here. Can you see that? There's a little bit of a gap. It does not seat all the way. So VAC700R nib unit is not going to fit properly onto the VAC700 body. Got it? So bottom line, it's just best not to switch the nib units, really. Just keep them separate and all will be well. Now the thing that I will say is if you want to get a different nib and you want the nib unit and all that stuff, it's not, not all hope is lost. You know, you can still do that, um, but the way that you're going to do that is by swapping the actual nib itself. It's a number six nib. You can just, you know, pinch the nib and feed together, pull it out. You know, you can take the nib and feed out of your other Twisby VAC 700 or VAC 700R. It is a little tighter fitting in the VAC 700. How about that? They're in the 700R. This is my 700R. I've taken it out of the VAC 700 before. Okay, still comes out. You just gotta be careful. It's, in, it's lodged in there pretty good. But it comes out and I can take my nib units and swap them back and forth. You do have to put them back in in a certain direction, you know, because the nib unit itself has kind of a specific manner that it needs to fit in. You know, I can't just jam it in there any which way. It has to fit in because it has kind of this cutout. Um, it's very, very subtle. You can't really see it, but it's got a specific cutout that um, accommodates the nib. So I can fit it back in there. And I can swap them in between each other like that, but it's just not quite as easy as switching and swapping the grips like so. It's also a number six nib. Technically, Twisby won't warranty other brands' nibs, but you can technically use another brand number six nib like a Goulet or Edison or anything like that um, at your own kind of risk of doing so. You can do that. And I have to remember to swap these nibs back. And then when it comes time to actually use it, uh, to get back to your original question, to use it in the VAC 20 inkwell, it will work. Uh, both pens will still work in this because it's really only the internal components that have changed. The outside part, what screws into the VAC 20 inkwell, is actually the threads on the body. So this is my 700 uh, R, the new one. So this one will thread perfectly on here just as my VAC 700 will. So that part has not changed at all. Cool. Then the other difference that I'll point out here, um, maybe not a super material difference, and again, my pens are half assembled at this point. Um, they went to a metal component here um, for the piston rod as opposed to a plastic one. So the 700R has a metal component there. So this is kind of a nice touch, a little more durability and stuff. Whew. Hope that helps you out. Clear as mud. I'm sure it is. But anyway, that should at least give you a little bit of an idea what you're in for with the back 700. This is kind of a tinkerer's pen if you'd like to take them apart like this. I enjoy it, but not everybody does. It's really not for everyone, but um, at least now you have somewhat of an idea of what you're getting into if you do. Cool?